All right, well, welcome everyone for our Sugar Busters workshop. Tonight, we're going to talk about some things with choices about how you eat and how that impacts your body. But to get started, my name is Mrs. Hinman, and I thought we would do kind of a fun little warm-up exercise. So can you go ahead and stand up off your chair? And just to kind of get, I know I'm crazy, but just to kind of get ready, let's take a nice big inhale and reach your arms up high. And exhale, touch your toes. Good, two more, inhale, reach way up high. And exhale, touch your toes. One more time, reaching way up high. And exhale. All right, so this is where it's really gonna get crazy. And I want you to watch your parents and see if they're gonna do this with us. Let's see for 30 seconds if I can have you jump up and down as many times as possible. Ready? Go. <laughs> now see if your parents can do it too with us. <laughs> but see if they can do it without laughing. Who can do it with a, with a serious face? <laughs> you guys are pretty good. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> Christina's got it. Good job. Ready? 10 more seconds. Keep jumping, jumping. How many jump? Oh, Julia's got a serious face. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Whew. That kind of warms you up, makes you feel ready. Now you can have a seat and relax. Thanks for uh, being such an active audience. So some of the things that we did kind of show you how your body can change the way you feel and even just moving and breathing can have an impact on, whew, now I feel a little bit more awake and more alive. So today we are going to be talking about foods. Does anyone know what types of foods are up here? Or what do you think? Do you like to eat these kinds of foods? What do you think? Um, the first ones are donuts. Uh, yep. Are those fries? Oh, mac and cheese. Oh, mac and cheese. Um, and candy. a bunch of candy. Do you guys like to eat those kinds of foods? Uh, no. Yes. No? Uh, <laughs> only for Halloween. There you go. That's I a, a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> those are, but Oh, that's, you probably like the taste of that, right? Yeah. All right. Well, what do you guys think about these kinds of foods? Do you know what these are? I like the meat. You like the, you like the chicken and the asparagus? Who likes asparagus? Yeah. Hey, you guys are a pretty good, pretty good audience here. That is, that is a little atypical. You like the chicken. I know. The roasted chicken is really good. Cool. Well, what sometimes when I were in front of other kids and parents, they say, you know, these foods are not necessarily my favorite. I like the stuff on the other page better. But you guys seem to have a pretty good, pretty good grasp of all the different foods. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So this is someone who looks like he's really excited for a big frosted piece of cake, right? Mm -hmm. Can you? Imagine how you feel sometimes when you're at a birthday party and you see the gigantic cake in front of you, you get kind of excited, <gasps> you crave it, it's going to taste so good to eat it, right? That's how we feel before we eat sugar and right while we're eating sugar. And that is because your body has all of these different things that are happening when you eat sugar. It releases all of these chemicals inside your body, so it feels really good, right? But then do you know what happens after you eat it? And after it goes into your body, this is what I call the roller coaster, the sugar roller coaster, because we feel really, really good when we're excited about eating it and when we anticipate what it's going to taste like. And while we're tasting it, it's awesome. But then, boom, what happens? You throw up. Well, you could throw up. Sometimes you might. But there's a big crash that happens. And when we experience a crash in our energy, that's when we feel like it's hard to focus and hard to maybe stay sitting still at school or focusing on what your mom or dad asked you to do. Does anyone ever have that where like, oh wait, I can't even remember. What did mom ask me to do? Or what about when you sometimes feel worried around your friends? Like, oh, I'm worried if they're going to like me. I'm worried if I'm going to fit in. I'm worried about things. Sometimes feeling worried is related to when you have this crash after eating sugary foods. Another thing is like, if you don't want to do anything, I just want to sit on the couch, forget going to ride bikes outside. Sometimes I just want to sit on the couch and veg out. I don't have energy. Or even a hard time sleeping through the night, waking up because you just can't stop 
racing of your mind and it's hard to stay asleep or hard to fall asleep. So today we are going to talk about how you can try different ways to kind of even out that roller coaster and have a nice smooth ride so that you can feel focused and full of energy and it can be easy to sleep. And the most important thing I think for me, I'm just speaking of myself, is you feel confident and you don't feel worried. And I'll talk a little bit more about sometimes why you can feel worried a lot when you eat sugar and your body goes in that roller coaster up and down. So, Mr. Uh, Hinman's gonna talk about why we're here today. Yeah, so um, my name is Mr. Hinman, uh, Mr. Mike Hinman for the adults in the room. <laughs> um, and, and you know, the first question we always ask our clients is what is your why? Why, why are you here to see us? you know, what is the reason? So we, we, we wanted to jump in and, and tell you our why, you know, why we are here, why we are promoting this, and why we started a new company together. So years ago, there was a defining moment in my personal life when I was on a boys weekend up in Wisconsin. It was a boys golfing weekend, and um, I wasn't taking care of my body like I should have been. And, um, you know, it was just a long weekend. And then I, what happened to me on the very third night of this long weekend is the whole left side of my body went completely numb. And then I lost all bodily control of my left side and I was holding a drink and my arm started going like this and the drink started flying everywhere. And so this was really, really scary for me and I had no idea what was going on and um, it, 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 I, I couldn't sleep for a long time. So. From that moment on, my entire life really did change. Um, like I said, I couldn't sleep at night. It wasn't just that one night. It was for a long time. It was probably for well over a year after that. I couldn't sleep. I had anxiety, adrenaline. Things just got so bad where I would be sitting at work, and um, I, I, I just couldn't sit there anymore. I started freaking out, for lack of a better word. I had to go downstairs, walk outside. I'd literally walk around the block 100 times just to relax, calm myself down, just so I can go back in and, and focus and, and be normal or as close to normal as it was for me at that point. Um, looking back at my story, hindsight's always 2020, right? And so, you know, I, I looked at what was happening in my life and um, I, was, I was a trader for 17 years, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, you know, or not anxiety, but a lot of, um, uh, stress and adrenaline flowing through my bodies. Back in 2010, I accepted my dream job to become a portfolio manager for an $85 billion um, um, uh, investment management firm. You know, this is my, my time to hit it big. This is what I've been waiting for, right? So I took the job, we talked it over, um, and then right when I got in there, the markets went really sour for about three to four years. I didn't make any money. Um, job was on the line, I was chasing the money, I wasn't sleeping, I'd go to bed, I'd sleep for what, two to three hours, I'd wake up yeah. just so I can trade the international currency markets all night, just to try to make more money, and, and it just, it wasn't a healthy lifestyle. On top of it, I was um, out with clients a lot, which meant a lot of drinking, a lot of eating steaks this big, the size of my head, none of it really added up. So. Um, what I ended up doing at that route was calling the doctor, going down the Western med medical path. So I saw my doctor, I saw every doctor he recommended, I saw every specialist in the book, I saw every, um, took every test in the book possibly imaginable, and they all came back with the same exact thing. Physically, you are fine, here's some medicine, calm yourself down. Um, but, but, I mean, I knew, I've been around long enough, no medicine is, is just a, uh, it's just a band-aid for the symptom. It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't address the cause. And that, that wasn't for me. It, it wasn't for us. It wasn't for our life or, or anything. So finally, after exhausting all the Western medicine routes, I turned to my wife who's been um, in, um, I guess, the holistic world, interested in holistic health for a few years now, and said, I'm out of options. I need some help. And so she gave me the name and phone number of some people I should call. I called them up and um, what they really did was teach me how the body works, what type of fuel you need to make it work and um, um, really how, you know, it, it might start with nutrition but there's other aspects of life you need to put, pull in order too, being relationships, the healing of your body, 
um, the spirituality aspect and, and really the stress management side of it. So, so I followed their advice and within a very short amount of time, I felt great. I felt better than I ever did, but felt better than I did in years, actually. So, um, and my problems went away, and so I had the problems for 12 to 18 months. Within a few months, they're gone, and I was back to normal, and I felt great. You know, during this whole time, too, on top of it, that was adding to my problems was uh, my family wasn't in very great uh, health either. My wife was dealing with an autoimmune disease. Uh, one of our daughters um, started having seizures out of the blue just for no apparent reason whatsoever, and and uh, you know, my in my daughter's case, you know, she was a very typical, typical um, little girl. You know, I mean, she was dealing with, you know, the homework, uh, lots of homework at school, the continuous testing. We are very active parents, just like most parents are nowadays, running from activity to activity, never stopping. And you know, we always wanted our daughter to do well, putting stress on her that way, and so forth. And you know, she just cracked one day and then was diagnosed with um, epilepsy. So what we, you know, after seeing the results from me, we went down the same exact protocol with my wife and my daughter, and lo and behold, you know, every, everything um, cleared up. And I mean, it was, it, it's amazing how, you know, Western medicine did absolutely nothing. And just changing your lifestyle and changing what food you put in your body, it, how it cleared all these symptoms and all these problems addressing the cause and not just the, the symptoms. So, in, in fact, in my daughter's case, it was so amazing and how fast it, it, she cleared up that uh, her doctor couldn't believe it, wanted to know what we did, is doing further research on it, and is debating about bringing us in to work with his clients, um, you know, as soon as he, I mean, he's got to do his own research and so forth before he recommends us. But, I mean, he's blown away on, on, on the, her recovery time. So that's really our story right there. That is our why. That is why I left my, my job to pursue this company with my wife, and we're, we're going all in on this. And that's why we put together our proprietary system, our seven-step proprietary system to help help families and children out there, um, you know, find the health and happiness that, that we found over the years right now, so. Yeah. All right, so now back to some fun strategies. So today we're gonna talk about 10 things that you can do to kick your sugar cravings to the curb, or at least to help reduce them. And I want to, I'm gonna give you 10 ideas, but uh, your homework is to think of two that you think maybe would work for you. So at the end of tonight, we're gonna share some ideas and maybe you can tell a parent or somebody else which two you think you would be willing to, to try or you think would work for you. Um, so this, this is uh, more just for background, but our goal tonight is to teach you why your body wants the sugar all the time and to give you choices so that you can choose and be in the driver's seat for how you take care of yourself. Um, I have this little shape up here, and I, my, my, my daughters make fun of me saying this is kind of a weird way to look at your body. I know your body does not look like a pyramid, but bear with me, and as we explain this, I'll, I'll show you how I think this applies to the way our bodies work. We tend to choose foods based on how they taste, right? Would you say that you like to pick foods by how you think it's going to taste? Yeah, absolutely. And the taste is just a very small little piece of what that food can do for you. And I'm going to give you an example as an analogy. Let's say you're with a group of your friends, and you guys are all going to take this bike ride to a brand new park that opened up. And it's a really cool park. It's supposed to have awesome monkey bars and cool new things to try. And in order to get there, you have to ride your bike. So I say, oh, come on over to my house. I have a whole shed full of bikes. You can pick which one you want. And I choose Petros. You get to pick what your favorite taste of color bike is first. So what color bike would you like me to get out of the shed for you? Blue. blue. All right. So I'm going to go back into my shed, and you're kind of feeling excited, like, yes, I'm going to get the blue one I want. And I come out, and you see me dragging the bike, and it looks awesome. Just like when you're eating that sugary food, it tastes good, you're excited. And then I hand it to you. But guess what? That bike doesn't have a back pedal on it. How well is that bike going to work for you? Not well. So what do you think about if I give you a bike with a missing pedal? This isn't so fun. And then you start to feel like, man, I need, this isn't going to work for me. I need something new, right? So I said, OK, let's try again. Let's try again. What is your second favorite color? Which one did you pick? 
red. Okay, I'll go get you a red one. I go back into my shed and I pull out a red bike and I'm like, oh yes, okay, and you're thinking, yes, now she's gonna get it right. I give you your red bike. This is another one that you picked, right? Because you picked by your favorite taste of color. And I hand it to you and it's missing a front tire. Is that gonna get you very far? No, you're still not gonna feel very good because your friends are gonna take off and go to the park. And I'm you're still you know Unless you know, that would be, yeah, <laughs> that would be a good alternative, right? Your body can always adapt. But, but the point is, that gave you that example, because if we choose foods that are only taste really good, and we don't think about how they're going to work in our body, or how they're going to make us think, and how they're going to make us feel, then pretty soon we're, we have to keep choosing more and more foods, and more and more foods, because your body is smart. And your body's going to say, you know what, you're not giving me stuff that can make me feel good. Or can help me work well. So your body's gonna make you think that you need to eat more and you're gonna want more food so that you can get stuff to make it work well. So the next picture is kind of a little change about how things can change over time. So this, does anyone know what kind of shape this one is? It's kind of a weird, do you know what this is called? A force, a parallelogram? Actually, I don't even know. It's not a parallelogram because these yeah, two are. It is. is it a parallelogram? No, it's not. It's a trapezoid. It's a trapezoid. It's, not a it's a trapezoid. But the point is, so that your body is so cool because when you choose foods that can go all the way down and make you feel good, so that means they taste good, they work good, they think good, and they feel good. Pretty soon, your taste buds change, and over time, you can have more things that taste good, and work well and help your body think clearly and feel good. So it sounds kind of weird and you kind of have to be willing to try and sometimes try again and again. Just like if I were to give Petros his red bike and he could find a way to try and fix it, right? He could put on a new tire, he could maybe fix the pedal, and over time, it can repair itself. The body can change and adapt. So you can find foods that, even though at first you didn't think they tasted so good, but they felt really good and they helped you think, they can change the way your taste buds work. So that's kind of a cool thing to know. But the first step is to choose foods that have a lot of those good working components. So kind of forget about the roller coaster of the sugar and choose foods that are going to really help your body. So one thing that you can do to kind of crave your sugar, curb your sugar cravings is to drink more water. A lot of times when you feel like you want something to eat, you can drink water first and wait for a few minutes and then all of a sudden that sensation is minimized. So that's step number one. Number two is to swap out the sugary foods that you're craving for something else. So instead of saying, oh, no, I'm not going to let myself eat, because your body's saying you're hungry, you want some energy, instead of saying, I'm going to have the chocolate chip cookie, maybe I can have some berries or some nuts, something that's a different alternative. So that's a really easy swap out. St another idea is to increase the amount of fiber that you eat. Soluble fiber, in particular, is very filling and it's very helpful for your body. When we talk about finding foods that work well in your body and that allow you to think clearly and feel good, beans are one of my top picks. And I have a couple samples up here to show you how easy it can be to go to the store and buy some cans of beans, open them up and rinse them, and just a couple spoonfuls can be a great alternative to sugar. Thank you. Another step that you can swap out the sugary roller coaster food is some healthy fats. Now, that is kind of weird. Some people think, I don't want to eat a lot of fat because that's how I'm going to get fat. But that actually doesn't happen that way because if you eat too much sugar, that's when your body can start to pack on the extra turns into fat. But eating good, healthy fats, omega-3 fats and omega-6 fats, really give your body energy to stay feeling satisfied and to work at a slower, consistent, smooth ride. So one of my family's, our family's favorites is from Costco, guacamole. We love guacamole. You can put it on eggs in the morning. You can put it on 
vegetables as a dip. You can use it as a side with dinner. So that is a really easy way to swap out a sugary food and switch it for something that's a good, healthy, filling fat. And that's really been a misconception in, in uh, this country for a long time. That they, you know, People say they go on a fat-free diet. Fat does not make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. So too much sugar. Too much sugar yes. makes you fat, I should yes, say. Yes, absolutely. Um, another idea is to change that sweet tooth for some sweet vegetables. So does anyone know what this is? A pepper. A red pepper. These are really good to chew on for snack. Red peppers. Or what about this? A potato. What kind of potato? Sweet potato. A sweet potato. So sometimes just baking a sweet potato. potato. Fries. Yeah, sweet potato fries. Or even just baking a plain sweet potato is a good is snack. Real. What's weird? Is it real? Is it real? It is real. Do you want to hold it? So you can hold it if you want. Yeah, you can pass it around. So those are some good alternatives to the sugary stuff that's not going to make your body work so well. Another strategy is to look at the ingredient label because there's a lot of hidden names for sugar. We don't even realize how many different names there are that really all are different types of sugar. So just as a reference, a rule of thumb is that anytime your label has more than five grams of sugar, so if you look here where it says 26 grams, that means your body is definitely going on a big roller coaster ride. So if you want to keep your smooth ride and feel good, look for foods that have five grams of sugar or less. So that's kind of just an easy rule of thumb. These are all the different names for sugar that are hidden on the ingredients. So some of them you may not even know how to pronounce. But those are different names to look out for. All right, idea number seven of how you can swap out your craving for sugar is to turn off the TV. Why would you want to turn off the TV? Because, <laughs> because you don't know. That's okay. Well, you know what? What types of foods do they usually show on the commercials in TV? Um, yeah, usually they show like the, yeah, the cheeseburgers and the cereal. That's right. I mean, a lot of times they show you the things that have a lot of high sugar stuff, and then when you see it, you're like, oh, that looks, that's, that looks good. I want it. So if you can turn off the TV sometimes or stay away from the commercials, then right there that reduces your craving for some of these less nutritious foods. This is for the parents, right? Number eight, don't have it in the house. The more likely you are to have it in the house, the more likely you are when you get hungry or when you're feeling like you're really low on energy and you don't want to do anything, you're going to turn to that sugar, that quick fix. So if it's not in the house and all of a sudden it becomes a much harder process to get it, that's a good way to reduce the amount that you eat. And what about sleep? How is sleep related to your craving for sugar? Anyone know? Any ideas? Hmm. Any ideas? Well, when we feel like we don't have enough energy, then we really crave sugar because sugar gives you a quick boost of energy before you go crashing down. So if you get a good night's sleep, then you have more energy throughout the rest of your day, and chances are you're not going to want to have that really quick boost of energy and then come crashing down again. So sleep is very important for helping you reduce your overall sugar cravings. And this is my favorite. So a lot of times we look for sugary foods as a way to bring us joy. Because it does. It makes you feel good. It releases chemicals and endorphins in your body that make you feel good. So if you can maybe stop and think of one or two things that you love to do that also make you feel good. Maybe it's going for a bike ride with friends. Maybe it's hanging out and chatting over the phone. Maybe it's talking with mom or dad. If you can think of something else that you like to do and that makes you feel good, when you have a craving for something sweet, perhaps try and do that thing first. So those are some quick tips. And remember, I'm going to quiz uh, you at the end me, about uh, which two you think you would be willing to, to try. Me, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, this is our proprietary system. This is what uh, Amanda and I have created here. Um, it's a seven-step proprietary system to 
to getting the results that, um, I mean, this is what we did for our family. This is what works. This is what we've seen work over and over again. And, and so this is what we're um, presenting to the world here. So, I mean, the, fir the first step is to make living a better life a priority. I mean, y you have to make it a priority. Without, without doing it, you're not going to see the results. It's, it's like that with everything in, in life. So you have to do it that way. The second step is focus on making calories count instead of counting calories. So, um, I mean, America is taught to, to count calories. It, that's the right diet, and that's what you're supposed to do. It, it has nothing to do with that. I mean, I, I, I don't count. I put, whenever I'm hungry, I put food in my body. But I make sure whatever goes into my body actually feeds my body. And I, I'm eating more than ever. And one of the things I didn't tell you about my story is, I lost over 30 pounds doing it in a few months. I mean, I lost 30 pounds, in, and even another byproduct was I had really bad allergies. They're gone, completely gone just by giving your body what it needs. I mean, this is amazing, truly amazing, and, and people don't get it. I mean, pe most people like me, you're not going to get there until you have to get there, but it, it works. Um, the second one is improve the relationships in your life. So everyone always talks about unconditional love. We do the same. It's unconditional love and unconditional respect. It's, it's both, and, and it really does help at the end. Prioritize the healing. So this gets back to the sleeping aspect Amanda um, brought up, where ideally adults are supposed to have seven to nine hours of sleep every night, and real ideal would be to just set one day a week off to the side where you just surrender to all adrenaline activities. Believe in the power of the universe here. So this is, um, this is one I struggle with personally. I'm not saying you need to be religious, reach out to God, go to church, anything like that. I'm just saying you, you need to realize, um, um, the more that you realize everything happens for a reason and you learn from those reasons and that the universe is actually going to supply you with what you need, it, it brings you, um, it, it just makes you more at ease with what's out there. And that, and that really helps with even the next step, with is initiate a stress management program. So that's, I mean, this is all interrelated. So you have to take control of your emotions at this point. And, and what I do with my personal self when stress hits me is I think of a worst case scenario. And starting this company is a prime example of worst case scenario. I left my job, um, my dream job, you know, money wasn't coming in. We, we, we took a flyer and, and I looked at her and said, you know, what's a worst case scenario here? Why am I doing this? And reality is I'll be out of money and I'll be living in my parents' basement. Okay, so <laughs> that's the worst case scenario. I can handle that. I still have a wife who loves me. I still have healthy children, um, money. I can make more money tomorrow. And my parents have a pretty nice basement, so it's not all that bad, right? <laughs> and then the last one, and this is all in chronological order, and the last one is get up and move, which is the activity part. And it's it's... It's, um, you know, too many people are, are thinking they have to get in the gym and do a kickboxing class, you know, three hours a day, really beat up their body. That's not the way it works. So you have to do what's right for you and, and what makes you happy. Me personally, it's yoga. I go swimming. We go on bike rides. It's families. Um, even doing yard work is more enjoyable than doing a kickboxing class to me. So <laughs> just get up, get out there, do something, you know, walking the dog, it all helps. So that, that's really our seven-step proprietary system right there. Do you have anything to add? You know, I did want to say one more thing, kind of kind of glossed over before I was talking about how when you have a lot of sugary foods in your life and you eat them consistently, one of the side effects is feeling worried or feeling anxious about things. And to go back to the story about the bike ride, right? If I were to, every single time you had something that you picked for which bike, if every single time I pulled out some bike that was broken, you would start to feel pretty worried, right? Your body is smart. And so every time you put things into it that are not things that are going to work well, it's pretty natural that your body starts to feel worried. And pretty soon that worry about one thing can, can translate into worry about other things, even worry with friends or worry with, you know, is this going to work if I'm doing well in school or worry about am I going to do okay in my sports team? That worry translates and it starts because your body is used to being worried about am I going to get the bike that has all the parts that are going to work so it kind of kind of ties together and the more you can practice giving your body foods that have all of the things it needs to work well 
the more you'll see that your worry and anxiety goes down and down. All right, does anybody have something they're willing to share that they'd be willing to try? What do you think? Drink more water. Drink more water. That would be a good one. Absolutely. Any, any, anyone else? Oh, that's great. I love it. Swap out, swap out food for something else that a, feels a feel gooder. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming tonight. If you have any questions, feel free to ask Mike or I afterwards, and uh, we're happy to be here with you. Thanks.